friends. So as you can see this ground is disturbed. I've been pulling my mint out. There was a patch right here and I don't want it to spread too much. So I kind of keep it at bay by harvesting quite often. So I'm going to finish up this little area and then I'm going to also harvest these um, tomorrow. But in the meantime, I'm going to wash what I've harvested. Check it out. So I harvested all this uh, mint and I'm going to triple wash it, bring it in, um, take the leaves off of, possibly take the leaves off of the stems and then we're going to freeze dry it so that I can have mint tea. I did that with my bay leaves and my rosemary and I'm going to do that with my basil as well so that I have lots and lots of these leaves for teas or for food, um, especially the bay leaves, those are really handy. And I'm going to um, collect the kefir lime leaves as well as the limes as soon as the season is over and the limes are bigger. Hi friends, so we collected our Rosemary, Tuscan Blue Rosemary that we grew in the backyard. It's huge. It's been three years in the ground and probably a year in the pot. Um, and it grew enormous in the three years it's been in the ground. We haven't really harvested it in the last few years. And because it's so enormous, I decided to start harvesting it and to um, start freeze drying it and, and preserving it for future use. So we froze dry four trays, which comes out to two bags of these, um, the product, which what happened was I collected, this is another batch of rosemary I collected from my bush. It was probably three feet wide and two and a half feet tall. So I harvested this, washed it three times, and I'm in the process of taking the rosemary leaves off of the stems. So let me show you. So here they are, and now I'm refining it and taking off the little branches, the leaves off the little branches. So I'm gonna make another batch, and then this one, I will hand out to friends and family in jars. Hi friends, sorry for the background noise. My neighbors are doing construction. So I have dug up several rosemaries that I've propagated. Here I have one, two, three, four, five plants of rosemary, Tuscan blue rosemary, and then one loquat. Um, these are going to my sister, the rosemary, and I still have two more that are in the ground that I'm not going to pull out yet unless she wants them. I have tons of cosmos just blooming everywhere. It's almost taller than me, and it's just gorgeous. It just bloomed like crazy. loving it so much because this is the one that lasted and did really great along with some zinnias and um, this is the candy stripes but you don't see the stripes anymore I guess it starts off with the stripes at the edge and then it fills in so it looks full but when it's new you see the stripes or the edging but regardless, I love that it has the yellow center and then it looks like the pink is painted on. And it, and it has movement when the wind blows. It looks so beautiful. Hi friends, this is my bay leaf tree. Laurel Sweet Bay. Um, let's see, it's called Sweet Bay Flavorful Culinary, culinary Seasoning. It was $13.98 and it was in a little four inch pot and 
it was probably a foot and a half tall and now it's grown and it was about oh, seven feet tall or more and I chopped off the top right here because I'm not sure how tall I want it to be but this is about the size I'm happy with so I just trimmed a little bit and I trimmed a bunch off the bottom if, as you can see because I'm harvesting the leaves and I'm going to um, freeze dry it. So I got my bay tree about, my bay laurel about four years ago I think, maybe three years ago. Um, and I just stuck it in the ground and it does, a lot of plants do better in the ground by the way. Um, but if you don't have a space to put it in the ground, then leave it in the pots but give it good fertilizer and good soil. So now I've harvested the bay leaves. I'm going to wash them. As you can see, the leaves are very, very nice and clean and easy to wash and harvest. And um, I'm going to dry some of them, freeze dry, and then I'm going to use them. And it's a good plant for putting into your curries and all kinds of stuff. Now I have thrice washed my sweet bay leaves and I've washed them really well. They're very clean, um, very smooth leaves. However, sometimes the birds will pass by it or land on it and poop on it. And it's very, very few leaves get dirty like that. So I just scrub those off and the rest are really clean and I kind of scrubbed up I scrubbed on the leaves and the stems and got rid of a lot of debris so it's nice and clean I'm going to um, pluck off all the leaves off the stems and then set it in the on the freeze dryer um, trays and freeze dry them and if I want fresh bay laurel I still have I can harvest from the tree and I'm going to give some to my friends, my family, and neighbors. So here friends are all the bay leaves taken off of the, the branches and I'm going to freeze dry them. I'm going to set them on the freeze dryer trays and freeze dry them and put them in jars so they're ready to use and in the mylar bags for more permanent storage which is good for 20 to 25 years I believe. So here are the frozen dry bay leaves and I'm doing another batch so I'll have another two packages and I'm doing another batch of rosemary so I'll have another two packages and then another set of rosemary for another two packages and then some lavender for about four packages so um, and these are very lightweight long-term storage and you could file them just you know uh, one over the other or vertically in your pantry so I love it so much Hi friends, here is my pineapple sage, the one with the fl red flowers. And as you can see right here in the middle, there's a divot where I cut out some branches of pineapple sage. And what I'm going to do is collect the leaves for tea and throw the floral parts into the chicken coop to freshen up the coop. And make some nice tea out of it freeze dry the leaves. Now I'm processing it. I've harvested the pineapple sage, taken off the tops, the flowering tops. Here are some of the tops and I threw the rest in the chicken coop already. So I'm going to throw the rest of these in there as well. And I'm going to wash this three times to make sure I get any dirt out of it, dust, whatever, bugs 
there aren't really that many pests to bother it. Um, the ends tend to get burnt, but other than that, it doesn't really have that many pests. And in fact, uh, hummingbirds love the flowers, which in the garden, I still have a lot of pineapple sage, so no worries about uh, losing this plant. I have, I have plenty now. I um, have two areas where I grew them, so it's, it grows really, really well. Um, it dies back in the winter. It's perennial, and it comes back in full force and makes tons of blooms, tons of branches, plenty. <clears throat> and I got this from one single, small, uh, one foot tall plant that was in a three inch pot. And I forget the price, but it's a wonderful plant. So I have thrice washed the pineapple sage just as I have the lavender, the bay leaves, the rosemary. Um, I'm going to do that with the African Noonan basil and I've done several rounds of the bay and rosemary so I've started to go on to the other plants so I'm going to after triple washing them I'm going to strip the leaves off of them let the leaves freeze dry and put them in jars or in mylar bags and then um, hopefully I can have a lot of things to use in the future. Now if you don't want to eat or consume or make tea out of this, you could have just stripped the leaves off and or just chopped and dropped it on your property. Um, it doesn't get too, it doesn't get invasive, it just stays as one stalk and you can also strip the leaves off and throw them in the coop or the chicken run to freshen it up. Hi friends, so I harvested and triple washed the lavender and now I'm going to strip the leaves off and I'm going to make sachets, scented sachets with the lavender and I've changed my mind about the pineapple sage. I think because they're older and they already have the flowers, they're going to be bitter. I did have some earlier um, and they are pretty bitter for tea. So the best time to harvest them is before when the leaves, the foliage are young and before it starts to have the, the red flowers at the top. So what I'm gonna do, because of the scent, and I've already washed it, um, I'm just going to strip it and I'm gonna also make scented sachets. So pineapple sage and lavender, and I can look up how to make tinctures and oils with them. So there are many, many uses for them. Don't throw them away. Or if you use it for a chop and drop, that's good. Or if you use it to uh, to scent refresher chicken coop or chicken run, that's good too. So many, many uses for pineapple sage, lavender. This is my second batch of lavender I've harvested. And um, the other set I'm going to freeze dry and uh, I'm not exactly sure what to do with that for the time being but I do want to preserve it so and I've washed those as well. Another thing I've done is so I already froze I already froze and washed and freeze dried several rounds of rosemary and bay leaves and I put them in the mylar bags. Now I'm, I've froze freeze dried these rosemary and I put it in this clean jar and um, I did that so I got very very many it's because I had a huge uh, amount of rosemary and bay leaves so I harvested them so they don't go to waste preserve them clean them so they're ready to go for cooking and for oils and for whatnot and I just found out that you could take a sprig of fresh rosemary, stick it in a bottle of vinegar, and um, uh, put, it, put it in a spray bottle. And the rosemary is a disinfectant and a antibiotic, anti, not antibiotic, sorry, antimicrobial agent. And it will kill anything, so you can use it to clean your tables and other things. Uh, multi-use uh, cleaning spray so anyway but I have these ready to go for cooking because I washed them really well 
and froze dry them. So look at how many I've got. So I washed all of the jars and dried them. And here I've got some mint that I'm gonna drink tea. And so those are pretty good. And those are freeze dried. And the other thing is, and here is some more um, rosemary. And right now in the freeze dryer is uh, my bay leaves, my bay leaves, and some more rosemary. So I, I just plan on having tons and tons of these. So I'm gonna give some to friends, some fa to family, some to neighbors. Um, some to co-workers so there's plenty to go around and also it's preserved so I have the mylar bags one um, for the mylar bags ones are for future use like they're good for like 20 to 25 years these are good over you know over a year um, and we plan on baking tons of potatoes with rosemary and garlic on it love 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 that flavor and the scent and likewise you can make tinctures and rosemary oil out of it so you can use it to um to like make flavored oils to dip your bread in so many applications or just use it in a sachet to scent something um but i just love it mainly for culinary use um, there's no reason not to make use of it and I also have the fresh plant outside growing so every year it's producing more and more for me and these would make really cute um, really cute little jars for gifts as well so there you have it this is a frugal way of living um, a good way to use everything you've got since you spent all those hours planting and growing things you may as well to make the most of it by harvesting it washing it drying it using it saving it using it every way you can possibly do so and look here this is the mostly deconstructed lavender I figured it can just stay still a little bit um, on some of the stems because it's gonna go into a little sachet and it's gonna you know make your linen scented your closet scented your bathroom use it as potpourri it smells so so good oh my goodness <clears throat> it smells so so good and it can freshen up your your car as well, um, your closet, your linens, your dresser, um, all kinds of stuff. So give it a try. Um, I plan on looking at how to make oils and tinctures and stuff with it as well and salves. Hi friends, so I have a system of propagating my strawberries so that I have a plenty and it's really easy and I have now 48 plants um, here it doesn't look like it this is just some of it let me show you my other container of them and they're in little tiny pots here are some more strawberries and if you look closely they're in pots and they have drainage holes and what I do is to water them easily I water the whole concrete mixing container with it so I kind of water on top and then it whatever drizzles down below it'll just keep watering because it's really hot lately it's been in the 90s and upper 80s so um, definitely the plants are doing really really well look at how green they are and lush love it so much and I'm going to share some with friends family and neighbors and co-workers